In this video we're going to take a look at the electrochemistry of an iron selective electrode probe. To start with we're just going to take a look at the silver silver chloride electrode. So this is where we have a silver wire coated in silver chloride and then it's dipped into a solution of chloride ions and cations. Initially the solution is electroneutral so there's enough cations that we have a positive charge to balance out the negative charge of the chloride ions. Uh, once we put the silver wire in with the silver chloride coating we get this reversible electrochemical reaction occurring. So silver chloride can react with an electron to form silver metal plus a chloride ion. Once we establish the equilibrium uh, silver, ion, silver metal is either oxidized or reduced and this causes a separation of charge between the wire and the solution leading to a potential difference. Now the magnitude of this potential difference is given to us by the Nernst equation and the particular form of the Nernst equation is shown here. So phi m, the electrical potential in the metal wire, minus phi s, the electrical potential in the solution, equals a constant minus rt over f log of the chloride ion concentration. Now the equilibrium occurs at the boundary between the silver and the silver chloride so it's important that the coating is porous to allow this equilibrium to occur and it's possible to use electrolysis so if you put two silver wires into a KCl solution and pass electricity through one of those wires will get a porous silver chloride coating. Okay, now in terms of reference electrodes, there's various types available. We've got the standard hydrogen electrode, but that involves using platinum, which is very expensive, and hydrogen gas, which is inconvenient and dangerous. We also have the calomel electrode, which involves using mercury, which is toxic. So it actually turns out that the silver silver chloride electrode is a really convenient uh, starting point for making the reference electrode and also for making the iron selective electrode. So in terms of putting this together then, there's only one solution concentration to keep constant in order to keep the potential difference between this wire and the solution fixed. If we fix this concentration here of chloride ions, then we'll fix the potential difference between the wire and the solution. And that's a really useful thing when we're making a reference electrode or an iron selective electrode. It also accommodates a suitable electrolyte for minimising the liquid junction potential. So we can put within our reference solution chloride ions, but also if we put potassium ions, then the liquid junction potential will be minimised. And you'll see why that is in the previous video about liquid junction potentials. It's also simple to use, inexpensive and non-toxic. So silver silver chloride electrode is ideal for making our reference electrode. Now if we put this all together we've, for our reference electrode, we've got the silver wire with the silver chloride coating. We've also got um, a reference solution of saturated potassium chloride. And then the liquid junction is formed by the diffusion of KCl over this junction. And that minimises the liquid junction potential. Within this saturated, chloride, uh, saturated potassium chloride solution, we first of all put some solid silver chloride in and that solution becomes saturated in silver chloride and that prevents any of this coating from dissolving. So we put that in first and it just protects this coating here. We also put some solid potassium chloride in so that if things diffuse out and this solution concentration goes down we can maintain it actually by, we can keep it saturated by having this solid potassium chloride. Okay then, in terms of the reference electrode then we need a fixed and stable potential difference between the wire and the internal solution and we need to keep the ions participating in the electrochemical equilibrium at a constant concentration. The overall potential difference uh, needs to be sensitive just to the sample concentration and again the silver silver chloride electrode is a convenient starting point for putting this together. So if we have a look at this overall, what we've got is our plastic casing with the internal solution which contains the chloride ions and it contains the analyte ion as well and this is separated from the sample solution with an ion selective membrane and then we have our silver wire with the silver chloride coating 
And if we keep the chloride ion concentration fixed in here, then we'll keep the potential difference between the wire and the solution fixed, which is again something that we need when we're putting together and designing chlorine selective electrode. Okay, so in terms of the electrochemistry for the overall performance of the probe, we've got a diagram here that shows us the ion selective electrode and the reference electrode. And we're going to go round this diagram and think about the potential differences between the different phases. So to start with, the potential difference between phase M1, the metal wire, and solution S1, the internal solution, equals a constant, which we're labelling constant 1, to distinguish it from the other constants, minus RT over F log of the chloride ion concentration. So that is the Nernst equation for this situation. Now, the chloride ion concentration in solution 1 is constant because the solution sealed inside that electrode uh, casing for the isolative electrode. The chloride ions can't diffuse out, water can't evaporate, so the chloride ion concentration is fixed. So this term here, because this concentration is fixed, this whole number becomes a fixed number. So we have a fixed number, take away a fixed number, so we can just replace this with a new constant. So the potential difference between this wire and solution is just a constant. Now if we look at the next situation, the potential difference over this membrane, phi S1 minus phi S2 equals minus RT over F log of the hydrogen ion concentration in solution 1 divided by the hydrogen ion concentration in solution 2. So this is the Nernst equation over the membrane. And we can write this out slightly differently by the properties of logs so that we get this form shown here. So we've separated out the two concentrations. And now the hydrogen ion concentration in solution S1 is constant. Again, because the solution is sealed inside that electrode, the hydrogen ions can't diffuse out and the water can't evaporate. So the solution concentration for S1 of hydrogen ion concentration that is fixed so this just becomes a fixed number so we can write this now as phi s1 minus phi s2 equals constant 3 plus rt over f log of the hydrogen ion concentration in s2 which is the sample solution the potential difference over this liquid junction is given by the equation shown here and we note that the liquid junction potential is going to be minimal, it's going to be minimised because we're using an anion cation pair that have very similar transport numbers so we minimise that liquid junction potential. So we can just put that to zero and then finally the potential difference between this metal wire and this solution equals a constant plus RT over F log of the chloride ion concentration so again the chloride ion concentration in this reference solution is kept fixed because it's saturated and it's kept saturated even if KCl diffuses out by it's kept saturated by the fact that we put some solid potassium chloride in there. So this concentration is a fixed number so this overall becomes a fixed number so constant 4 plus this fixed number we're just going to call this constant 5. So now overall we've got all these different potential differences and what they depend on. Some of them are negligible, some are constant and some vary. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add up the left hand side. So we're going to add up all of these terms here. So we've got phi m1 minus phi s1 plus phi s1. So if you minus a term and add on a term they cancel each other out. And this happens again minus phi s2 plus phi s2 that will cancel, minus phi s3 plus phi s3, that will cancel. So we're left with the overall potential difference between the two wires, phi m1 minus phi m2. Now we're going to add up the right hand side and this is going to show us the overall sort of response of the probe. So we've got a fixed number, constant 2 plus constant 3 plus 0 plus constant 5. We're just going to lump that together and call that a new constant, constant 6, and we'll just be left with this term here plus RT over F log of the hydrogen ion concentration. So we can put that all together and get the overall response for the probe. Now 
this uh, phi m1 minus phi m2 we can replace replace this just with e so we'll just let this be the potential difference over the probe and what's interesting now is that this equation is the Nernst equation for an isolative electrode and for the variable here that gets plotted on the y-axis we can we can sort of see we'll call that our y variable we've got a constant c this term is the gradient and this term gets plotted on the x-axis so overall we get a straight line fit from this equation so we've got y equals mx plus c so you can see by putting all this electrochemistry together we get the overall response of the ion selective electrode which is linear with respect to the log of the analyte concentration. So I hope you found that useful. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe and check the bell icon for notifications of future videos. Thanks very much for watching.